we called innovations that I want to tell you uh, just a little bit about. These aren't hardcore recommendations, but we think if we're going to compete uh, with in Ohio as being um, a very sophisticated state, and we're not worried about you know the other states who might end up doing fewer hours uh, than than Ohio. Uh, we're worried about we're, we're concerned with Ohio uh, just being um, uh, the best uh, because we don't know of another state who's done what we've done. So I'll let the Attorney General talk more about the uh, what happens after. Uh, do you want to talk about the? Oh, we've we've yeah. done it. I'll just go on with with the, the innovations. So we have this category that you'll see in the book called innovations, um, and um, what we want is uh, for jurisdictions, uh, law enforcement jurisdictions, communities, and it's going to take more than just uh, the law enforcement agencies. We want uh, to be very sophisticated in, for example, uh, mental health crises. Some jurisdictions put together um, teams of people uh, who are trained in mental health, for example, who might go out into different communities <coughs> And if there is a situation, if you can uh, assemble a group or a team, kind of a mental health SWAT team, you know, of sorts, you know, who can go out and de-escalate a situation uh, because of the talents and the skills they have in that particular area, then we want to see that happen. Uh, similarly, we want to recommend that, you know, we do similar things with juveniles, for example. Juvenile behavior and adult behavior may be totally different. Uh, the in the uh, CIT training, the statewide ta or strategic plan, they talk a lot about uh, juvenile and juvenile efforts. So we don't want to ignore uh, you know that population, but there may be other populations that may be culturally different because in different neighborhoods. So we want uh, police departments to uh, not say one size fits all, and we know they don't do that now. We were very concerned about uh, the dispatchers. Uh, in terms of how, what their role would be in terms of, you know, reporting accurately and being able to uh, be well trained. Uh, you know, it's extremely important that, you know, those persons who first get these calls you know how to communicate that crisis to either law enforcement agency or fire department or both uh, so that, you know, we can respond properly with the right intentions. Uh, so as much as we can involve uh, the entire justice process and not just you know, those officers on the street will think we'll be you know, better off for it. Uh, I even talked to some sheriffs who said that when we met with the Buckeye State Sheriff's Association that we're not just responsible for law enforcement officers, we're responsible for managing jails as well. So at some point we have to look at the training that correction officers or sheriff's deputies might get while they're managing jails and we know today, you know, for example, uh, that jails are the biggest institutions that manage mentally ill populations. So there's a lot to train uh, uh, the entire justice system on uh, that we think is important. There's a lot of academic discussion about law enforcement anymore, and a lot of that is based on uh, something we call evidence-based policing, uh, that, you know, which means that sometimes you have to step back from just your you know, numbers of years of experience when uh, being a law enforcement officer and depend on the science, uh, depend on the data that's collected. If you collect data regarding where incidences might, or certain types of inc incidences might take place uh, in your jurisdiction, you can better, you know, probably have a better idea of how to respond. You might have a better idea of what the community uh, reaction might be or uh, how you can you know, elicit help uh, to be able to perform the work. So we really want of this notion of evidence-based policing uh, to be a big deal. Uh, so we want law enforcement agencies to be able to share lessons learned. You know, we heard about a system that the military uses where you know they actually share information and situations. So if there is something that might be um, avoided or you might want to do because it works well, uh, then why not share you know, that information with other jurisdictions in the state? So if that means us coming up with a website or a blog or other ways to communicate uh, these best practices or promising practice or practices or innovations, you know, we want to be able to do that as a service to the um, 
uh, over 900 law enforcement agencies in the state of Ohio. So um, there are a few others, but I think you get kind of get the gist of what uh, is important. We want a holistic approach to making sure that law enforcement officer law enforcement uh, in the state of Ohio is as sophisticated as we can possibly make it be. We want our citizens to be proud of our law enforcement agencies rather than thinking that they're going to be confrontational and somehow or another have an adverse, um, uh, there, there being an adverse impact with regard to a response or just uh, being involved in, in the community. 